Hi, I'm Mark. Welcome back to Foothill Paint Fabrication. Well, today we're going to color sand the doors and get them polished. So uh, I know you guys seen me polish before, but I don't think I've ever shown you uh, using the DA to uh, color sand. So we're going to get this thing out and uh, kind of save my elbow and my tendonitis a little bit and use the DA to sand most of this door. So let's just jump right to it. Okay, so for any of you that uh, haven't seen this done before, this is a 3M Hook It 2 system. Uh, so it's got a special DA pad, it's got Velcro on it, and uh, it's got a fairly firm, um, probably about three quarter of an inch uh, disc that attaches to your DA. Then there's the intermediate pad that goes on there. So you could actually use the sanding disc directly onto this, but you really want, you gotta have that intermediate pad in there. So the intermediate pad is very soft. I mean, can you guys see that right there? And they do wear out, and this one's getting a little old, but it's still fairly good. So they'll start to degrade around the edges from being pushed on, and then they get kind of weak. So um, I like to polish with this thing held pretty flat, but I'll turn it up and put, you know, pretty, pretty good firm pressure down and it starts to wear out that foam. So uh, it's not a very complicated system. This is a, a 1200 disc on here. I've got a box of them right here. Uh, this is 1200. Now remember sanding with a machine reduces the grit basically. So a 1200 be like me sand, hand sanding with 1500. So this works really well. I'm gonna stick a, a fresh one on here. I already did the other door. And so, uh, you know, I, I'm, Sandpaper is not that expensive, so my time is worth more than a piece of sandpaper. So I'll peel this off, get a fresh one on here, and then we'll get over to the door and I'll show you how, uh, how I use this thing. Okay, before we get started, uh, if you guys haven't seen it before, this is my door rack, and this is the first time I think doors have been on it on the channel. Uh, it had fenders on it, some other stuff, but it never had doors on it. And this is what I initially designed it for and built it for. So you can see down there on the floor, I got a chunk of cardboard. This floor isn't exactly flat, so it was rocking a little bit. And you want to make sure that, you know, it's firmly attached to whatever you're doing. It's on there pretty good. Now I can push on this thing pretty hard, you know, and it's going to flex a little bit, but it's not really going to get away from me. And that's important. So especially when you're using the DA to wet sand. Uh, you don't want it to moving or jumping on you and then uh, you slip with the DA and, you know, jack something up on the clear. So uh, just whatever you're using, saw horses, fender rack, whatever, just make sure your door or fender or whatever is securely attached so you don't have to worry about it moving and you can just get to sanding and get the job done quick. Okay, I've got a bucket of water right here. It's got a piece of uh, fresh 1500 grit wet dry sandpaper. It's got my uh, sanding pad, it's got my squeegee in it, and it's got a couple of small sanding blocks. So that way I don't have to get up and do anything. I can reach everything, it's right here. So the first thing we're gonna do is just take the DA and just kind of cover the whole area that we're gonna use the DA on to expose any uh, maybe debris, dirt, sag, uh, a nubbin. You know, a nubbin is, I told you guys before, it's when a little bit of clear dries on your fluid tip you hit pull the trigger and it shoots out and it'll stick on there so or any other thing that might have landed in a bug or whatever you happen to have so i'm just going to run over it and it'll show those right away i can see a few here and there and we got a little bit of a little bit of a not a run here but it went past the door lock area and it'll the clear will tend to uh, kind of coalesce right there and then form a drip or a bad spot so um, we're just going to run over this real quick and then, uh, then we'll see what we've got, and then we'll address those before we move on using the DA any farther. Okay, to start off, uh, we're just going to get the panel nice and wet. Uh, it doesn't really want to stay wet because it just got painted, you know, four or five days ago. Now, this clear likes to be, uh, wants to be uh, force dried at 140 degrees for 30 minutes. Uh, obviously, I don't have a booth with a heater in it, so I just park them out in the sun and let the sun uh, do the work for me. And uh, so this, this clear is shrunk down, it's ready to go. So what we're going to do is just get the pad wet. We get that good and wet, we get the panel wet, and we're just going to run over the whole thing. Uh, you don't want to turn the, it's not like a regular DA, you don't want to turn it up way up on its edge. You want to keep it flat, 
but you can put pressure on it, you know, like that. You just don't want to kick this thing way up and try to DA out some sort of problem. You need to fix that by hand. So let's just run over it real quick and see what, what pops up. Now, if the DA slows down on you, you just could hear that. That means it's getting dry. You need to get some more water on it. And until you break that uh, initial glaze, the water doesn't want to stick around on the panel much. Run the squeegee over it and see what we got. Now, you guys may have noticed I got close to the edges or went over the edges. I know that these edges roll over on this, so I'm not worried about uh, cutting through or anything on that. I'm not going to spend a lot of time over there. I'll end up doing that all by hand. But uh, after I squeegee, I can tell what's going on, and you can see that it didn't sand, you know, that close to the edge. So right away, you can see uh, the condition of the paint. Now, uh, you know, not all, clears don't lay down perfectly flat. That's just the way it is. <clears throat> Excuse me, you're spraying atomized liquid on here and it has to land and then flow out. But if to get it to flow out perfectly, it would need to be perfectly flat and you'd have to flood the thing and it still probably wouldn't lay down perfectly flat. And that's why we polish. So you can see all the high spots and low spots. Uh, you know, this is right here is ready to polish right there. But we have a few little nubbins in here that I want to take care of by hand before I go any farther. So I'm going to run over this real quick, lightly, and then I'll bring you back. And then we'll concentrate on some of these little spots we need to do by hand before we move on. Okay, so that exposed a few spots that I can see right away. Some are going to come out just with a DA, but there's one right here. There's one right here that I want to address. I don't want to try to do it with the DA. I'll do it with my little block, and I've got one right here. So let me move you in tight on one of these, and we're going to sand that out. And then I'll show you uh, why, I, why I like to do that instead of just trying to blaze away with the DA and get that out. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see it. We got that right there. You guys see that one? And we've got one right here. I don't know if it's in camera. It's just at the top of the screen there. So we're going to concentrate on this. Actually, we're going to do them both at the same time. And I can feel that. And you can see it was just a little bit of a nubbin. But what happened was the clear kind of pulled and went around it and, you know, made a imperfection right there. So we're saying it's smooth right here. And then this isn't. And so that's kind of holding that up from this whole area being sanded smooth. So I want to, I want to kind of block that out first. And then we can get the back on with the DA and get that, get this whole area taken care of. So it all looks like this, it's ready for polish. So I'm just going to use a block. I'm going to use this block right here. It's not very big. It's about an inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter. Got a piece of 1500 grit right here. And we're just going to sand this and then check it often. And, uh, I'm, you notice I'm trying to go at a little bit of an angle. I'm not going, you know, straight up and down. I'm going just a little bit of an angle with some moderate pressure. And I've got my squeegee here. And guys, I really, uh, I can't stress it enough. You got to have a good squeegee when you're doing this kind of work. Um, you just squeegee it like that. Blow on it a little. And just like that. It dries up, and so you know what's going on. And just look at it. I mean, what was that? Seconds. Just seconds that I sanded on that, and we've almost got that out. So the top one's already gone. Um, so all I have to do is do a little more sanding right there with that, and then we can move on. So we'll squeegee it again. And I don't rinse it or anything. The squeegee is pulls all that sanding debris off there. And I'll blow on it. And you can just barely see it. I don't know if you guys can see it in the camera, 
it's just right there, just a little bit left. So I'm going to sand it some more. I don't want to try to polish that out with the, uh, with the polishing wheel. I want to sand it out. I'm going to work around the area a little bit. And a lot of times I'll stop a little early because I know I'm going to go over it with the DA. If I was hand sanding this, I'd go ahead and get it all the way out. And there's just the tiny, tiniest bit of it left. And I'm going to leave that. We're just going to go over the whole thing with the DA. Now I've got uh, two or three of them along here that I want to do and, uh, and bust that out. But we've got a little bit of a kind of a run right here by the door lock. I want to bring in close and just uh, show you how quick to sand that out too. Okay, we're, here's where the tumbler goes for the block. Um, and you can see right here how the clear kind of pulled around it and, uh, and left it light here. And we got a little bit of a sag right there, a little run. And uh, you know, the discussion's gonna go right around there, but that's gonna show we can't have that. So we're gonna sand that off. I don't wanna try to get in here with anything uh, machine-wise and try to do that. I wanna do it by hand. So I'll be using the same size block. And all we're going to do is just do a really uh, kind of a large area right here. I'm not going to try to just push down on that spot. Since we're right here at this uh, sheet metal knockout, I want to make sure that I sand this in such a way so it don't cause any other problems. You know, worst case scenario, you went through on the very edge right here. It doesn't matter because you're going to be... Um, you know, putting your lock escutcheon over the top, you know, and it's not going to show. But you still want to be mindful of it. So we'll squeegee that off. I'm getting lightheaded here, blowing on this door. So it's looking pretty good, but I can still see it. just a trace of it right there but just like that it's gone so we don't have to worry about trying to uh, you know work a machine around that or anything and I don't have to try to polish heavier right around this area where it's going to be cutting on these edges so uh, this this whole area around the door uh, lock or the door lock and the door handle I, I kind of I'm going to do that by hand anyways we'll run over it with the DA but I'll finish with the by hand but see that came out just like that so that part's ready to polish I'm going to go ahead and finish up. I've got uh, three or four more on this door to knock out, and then we'll back away, and then we'll DA this out real quick, and then we'll start polishing. Okay, before we get back to DAing, um, for me, I would normally just DA uh, the whole area and then come back and hand sand the areas I didn't hit with the DA, uh, you know, like in this body line here or on the edges. But for people that haven't done it a lot, it's better to hand sand your areas that are going to be trouble or, you know, risky to uh, hit with, a, with the DA. So I'm going to go ahead and do it that way. So I'm just going to hand sand the perimeter, uh, you know, down here and along this body line. And then I'll move over to the DA and just work up to it. So uh, let me just jump to that real quick. And then, uh, then we'll get on that DA. So always remember, and I've told, I said this before, never sand where you're not willing to polish. So if you can't polish somewhere uh, or you don't feel comfortable doing it or whatever, the gloss that you sprayed on there is going to look way better than scratches that you put in with the sandpaper and then you couldn't polish out. So always remember that, you know, and it depends on, you know, level of what you're trying to do. If you're trying to do a show car or, you know, super, super nice paint job, then uh, you know you're going to have to get in there with small sanding pads and you know like that little DA uh, polisher that I showed uh, you know on another video. You got to do stuff like that, but you got you, you know you have to make that choice and you have to decide what you want to do. In this case, this is just supposed to be a nice driver, so I'm not going to you know kill myself trying to make this uh, vehicle perfect. And so we just squeegee it off. Just like that. As soon as it dries, I can tell. See right there? 
there's no orange peel in there. So we're good to go. We're ready to polish and I can get the DA up here. No problem. And not worry about, you know, bouncing off this body line or screwing something up. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to do along the edges and then, uh, then I'll bring you back and we'll get the DA going. Okay, we got the whole perimeter done. I, I actually uh, rinsed it off well and dried it so you guys can see what's going on. So we got a few spots here and there. We got all little spots that we, uh, trouble spots we had to sand by hand and the perimeter's done. So I hope you guys are at a decent angle. It's really hard to show you what I can see, uh, but this area right here is perfectly flat, ready for polish, but we have all this other orange peel looking stuff in here that's not deep. Um, I've been doing this a while. Uh, I can lay down clear pretty well. I'm not the best at it, but I can lay it down pretty damn well. And so there's not a lot of sand that needs to be done before you go into polish. And this is just a driver, so I'm not really concerned about, uh, you know, trying to make it perfect, perfect. So let me grab the DA. We're going to get this thing wet and uh, we'll do this area right here. And then uh, we'll see how it turns out. I've got uh, moderate pressure. I'm putting moderate pressure down. I'm pushing down. You just don't want to let it glide on there. You gotta, you gotta make it work. You'll tend to notice that it'll slow down on the areas that are polished really good or uh, sand, excuse me, sanded really well. And the areas that have a little bit of orange peel left on them, it tends to speed up a little bit. Not by a lot, but a little. And that's because the water underneath, the water underneath isn't acting as a suction. It's, uh, the water's actually inside those orange peels a little bit, a uh, acting like a lubricant. So just that quick, we've got a decent, and I, you guys may not be able to tell, but this whole area needs to be done. So I'm going to zip through this real quick, and then I'll let you know. I'll look at the clock, and we'll see about how long it takes. Okay, that took uh, seven or eight minutes, uh, maybe. And that's squeegeeing it, letting it dry in between and everything else. So it was probably only four minutes of actually sanding. So, and it's all looking really good. I've got a little spot down, a little area down here I need to finish off, but the rest of it looks great. We're about ready for polish. But before we do that, um, I just wanna, if you guys are gonna use a DA to do this, you want to make sure you keep the panel wet. Now, if it starts to dry off and slow down on you, you just need to, you know, put some more water on it. Use a sprayer. I just use my hand in the bucket and I just wipe my hand over it. Put a little water on the pad and get right back at it. But if you let it go dry, what will happen is it'll slow down and the DA will kind of dig in a little bit. And what it'll do is it'll put little pigtails uh, in here. And you'll see them. They look, you know, like little E's or something. Here, let me use a wet finger. So it'll look like this. And then that you'll actually see that when you try to polish. So uh, it's actually digging in and not sanding at 1200 grit. It's actually sanding much coarser. So you have to be aware of that. And if you see them, then you got to sand them out before you go to polish. So always keep, always keep the, the panel wet. Um, it doesn't have to be soaking wet, but you saw as I'm doing it, when it starts to dry off a little bit, I throw a little more water up there and just get back after it, it only takes seconds. So let me finish this up and we'll get over to polishing. Okay, all done sanding. You guys noticed I didn't sand the, the window frame. I didn't sand this body line right here. The, the clear is laid down really smooth there. It's gonna get polished, but it's not gonna get sanded. And then uh, I just sanded right up to the line here. Some uh, sand marks up in here, the polish will get it no problem. But if you look at the panel itself, it's all sanded, no orange peel, no nothing on it. I rinsed it off and wiped it down. 
So it's ready to go. Now I did not sand all the way underneath. I stopped about uh, right about here. So I'm not going to do underneath. That's not this paint job. So I'm not going to lay on my back polishing the bottom of that door. Show car? Yes. This truck? No. So uh, let me grab the, uh, put my apron on and grab the polisher and let's get this thing polished. Okay, uh, the panel's ready to go. I've got uh, my polishing pad for the number one, the red one. And it's, uh, I got it damp and I took it outside and cranked it up, spun it out, spun all the water out of it so it's moist, but it's not wet. And then uh, I've got the uh, 3M Perfect EXAC polishing compound number one. Now, I've done videos on polishing before, so I'm not going to go in depth on this one. We're just going to go over some of the stuff that may pertain if you've got one of these trucks or a truck similar or a door similar, that uh, some areas that you need to be concerned about and be careful around. So we're just going to start off by doing small areas like we do and then uh, just work our way across. And so I'm going to work my way across here. And we got, uh, of course, the wheel does not reverse. So it's easy to polish on this side because the wheel will be going off the edge. But on this side, the wheel is going to try to cut in on this edge. So we have to kind of flip upside down and polish this edge away. So other than that, it should be fairly simple. And you'll see me bump the polisher up over this edge. So I'm not, uh, I'm not trying to get in up here too high because this will cut my wheel. But I want to get in down in that groove. And you'll see me turn on the edge and get in the groove and then just kind of bump over the whole thing and get it polished. So let's get some polish on this thing, get it going. Moderate to firm pressure. Systematic movements. Just don't bounce around. Ease up your pressure and let the speed come up. Okay, so that's done right there. So I'm going to work on this area right here. So I'm actually going to have to flip around. So the wheel now is rotating this way. It's going to come off. And, uh, you know, that's just the safest way to do it. If you were to try to just do it this way and the wheel's turning like that, what it is is that foam, or if you're using a wool bonnet, which I hope you aren't using wool bonnets anymore, switch over to foam. Um, it's trying to push around here and then bend over that. And so that could overheat the clear, it could burn it, you could go all the way through. So it's better to be safe than sorry, and that's why I do it this way. So we're just going to put a little bit of compound right here, and we're just going to focus on this one spot. Make sure my mic is not jacked up here. So when I load the pad, I want to load it where I know I'm going to use it. It's no use to load your pad here in the center when you're not using the center. Most of your polishing is done on the, you know, inch and a half right here. Uh, in the middle, it's spinning very slow compared to the uh, outer part because of the diameter of it, right? So uh, you're, you're only going to use, you know, you can see the line right here. I was only using that much, much of it, you know, so you don't want to load all your compound here in the middle. So when you go to do that, drag it around a little bit, make sure you're using the spot of the of the wheel that you're actually going to use. All right, so now we're just going to flip over here if I can. And I'm just going to polish away and then right up that edge, just like that. Nice and safe. I can go over these uh, holes and everything. They're not that big that we're going to cut. Grab the towel and see how it looks.
Beautiful. Really nice. I see a little sand scratch right there I need to get. And that's where I was trying not to get too close to this way. And when I was doing it just, just now, I didn't push far enough over this way. And that'll happen. And it's not, I can't even hardly see the sand scratches, but I can see the dull spot. So I know I need to hit that again. And I'm gonna do that before I move on. So what I'll do is, I'll kind of look in the light and I can see it right there. And with artificial lights, you can see it really well. So there's just one spot right there. Everything else looks good. So I'm gonna hit that, I'm gonna move down and get across here. I'm just gonna do this. I'll just uh, do time lapse on this and cut through this whole thing. And if there's anything that I feel that you guys should see, then I'll go ahead and slow it down and we'll cover that real quick. Okay, uh, I just had another spot there. So I'm gonna finish this off up, up off camera and then uh, I'll bring it back and we'll do number two, the number two step. But it's looking really good, really happy. It uh, you know, feels super smooth. I can't believe how smooth this thing, these always, it always makes me happy to feel these after you get a good polish on them. So uh, well, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and I'll bring you back. Okay, we got uh, the first uh, polish done, the first step or cut, whatever you guys wanna call it. So it's, uh, it looks really good. I did have to go back and hit a few spots that were a little dull or I had a little sand scratches, uh, light sand scratches. So I made sure I got it all done really well. Clean the panel very thoroughly because you always want to make sure you get the old compound and anything else off before you move on to the next step. So it's ready to go. So I've got uh, the blue pad on there and I've got the number two, perfect EX uh, number two. So we're just going to start right here and work our way across. Now I did dampen this pad and then I uh, took it outside and slung it out, sped it so it's uh, damp but not wet. Okay, <laughs> you, can, you can literally feel the difference between when I slide my hand from this number two polish to the number one. I can feel right where it stops, right there. So, uh, you know, it makes a huge difference. I know it probably doesn't show up on camera, but it, it is so much shinier just doing that. So, uh, you guys seen me do this before. I'm going to zip through this real quick, and then, uh, then we'll take a close look at this thing and see how it came out. Okay, let's take a close up look. You can see the reflection there. You can read that bucket right there. And we had that member, we had that little sag right here. It's gone. And the little nubbins and everything, those are all gone. And it's super shiny. You guys can see the reflection out of the wall there. I think it looks great. It looks really great. Pretty happy. Okay, that wraps up this video on using the DA to uh, color sand. Uh, the door came out beautifully. It just, it's just, it looks awesome. I, you know, I can't wait till this truck's back together. It's going to look great. So uh, that this system, this hook at two from 3M, this is what I use, and it works great. Now, you know, I sanded just to 1200, and the first step on polishing took all the sand scratches out. But you can go finer if you want to. And don't get me wrong, you don't have to use a system like this. You can color sand by hand. I, I did it for years and years and years. Uh, trust me, my elbow, my tendonitis will tell you uh, every time I start doing it, it reminds me how many of these cars I've done like that. But this is really an elbow saver for me. Um, and if you have a larger vehicle, I know there's a few of you out there with some Chevy panel trucks. 
I couldn't imagine, you know, trying to color sand by hand one of those Chevy panel trucks. That thing's huge. You know, there's so much real estate on that thing. It'd be like uh, color sand in a school bus for me. So if you got a big project like that, a lot of flat panels, really consider picking up a system like this. It doesn't have to be the Hook It 2. It could be another brand, but uh, it works really, really good. Trust me. It, it, you know, uh, for me, it's really worth it. So thanks for joining me here at Foothill Paint Fabrication. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already. And mash that bell icon so you get notifications every time I release a new video. We'll see you on the next one.